Mike Zero, Delta Quebec, Whiskey, things are coming back here. U5 and 7 with a very strong US Baker. I'll do a copy, Matt. Go ahead. Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So you may have seen my last video where we built the Sirio Monsoon 10 meter vertical antenna and then made some contacts on 10 meters. Well, this is one of the radios that I used, the President Washington. Now I know some of you will just dismiss this radio because it looks like a CB radio. And yes, it can be modified for 11 meter use, but out of the box, it comes as an 80 watt 10 meter and 12 meter multi-mode transceiver. And if you do not like these types of radios, that's perfectly fine. Just go watch some kittens playing with wool or something. If you are a long time viewer of my channel, you will know that if a radio is bad, I'll make a point of mentioning it. And if it's good, in my opinion, then I will also mention that. Now, right off the bat, I can truly say that using this radio has been extremely good fun. And I got nothing but compliments from stations I spoke to on air. I will sum up what I really think of this radio at the end of the video, but first let's just talk about what's in the box. Well, you get a bracket, mic, manual, power lead and the radio. Now with that out of the way, let's take a look around the radio itself. Now personally, I actually really like the design of this radio. It's sleek, modern looking and has literally all the main features that you'll need to change accessible by the dedicated front panel buttons. Now when you think of ham radios, this has to be the closest dedicated 10 meter radio that I've tested to date. Now, don't you find it strange how the top tier companies don't make 10 meter dedicated radios nowadays, if ever. On the rear is a rather large heatsink, which incidentally, you can purchase two cooling fans as optional extras. Not entirely sure why they don't include them as standard. I guess countries with warmer weather will appreciate those more than if you're using it in somewhere like the Arctic. The antenna socket is the standard SO239 and the power connector, well, that's in the form of a three pin socket. There is a 3.5 millimeter socket for PA or public address and a 3.5 mil socket for an external speaker. There's also another socket which looks to me like a 2.5 mil socket and that's labeled as Vox. The speaker is located underneath, but as mentioned a moment ago, you can connect an external speaker if that's a problem. Turning on the President Washington, you're presented with a nice and clear display. Now, one of the things that I think lets this radio down is the channel numbers, although it does show the frequency on the bottom row of the display. Now, by default, there's 40 channels per block. Each block is assigned a letter, which you can change with the band button. And this lets you choose to operate on either 12 meter band or the 10 meter band as it is out of the box. You can, however, change this so that the radio operates in continuous VFO mode. So you don't need to use the band blocks, which is kind of closer to what we'd expect from a ham radio transceiver. So looking on the front panel of the President Washington, we've got the volume control here. We've got the squelch here. If you turn it all away, anti-clockwise actually goes into automatic squelch which is quite cool we've then got a usb output here it does 5 volts at 2.1 amps and obviously this is the microphone connection here the buttons along the bottom here we have a mode button which changes between am and fm and ssb etc like so and then we've also got like a function feature Whereas if you hold the button in, it will go into PA. So that goes into PA mode. I'm not going to turn that off. Memory area where we can access memories. And we can also set the CTCSS or DCS value as well by using this key by holding it down. Scan or dual watch. Dual watch is where we can monitor two different frequencies at the same time. And then we have ANL and noise blanker. And then we've got high cut as well. High cut is essentially just taking off the top end or top end of the audio that you're hearing. Sometimes it will eliminate some of the hiss that you're hearing and sometimes it'll just make things generally sound better. Over here we've got quick emergency access by pressing the EMG button. This also doubles up to adjust RF gain and also mic gain as well. Over here, we've got the band button. So as this is just in 10 meters, we can press the band button and go through the different bands that's available here. 
We've then got Vox. Now Vox is essentially voice activated. NRC, so this is noise reduction. So you can set noise reduction on receive and transmit. If you press the button, you'll see that it will cycle through different colors as you press it, indicating whether it's off, receive, transmit only, or both, which is quite handy. We then got the RX and TX button here. Now this only works on SSB, and that is because this is for the clarifier. And again, you can have it so it's off, receive only, transmit only, or both. At the top, we've got echo, and we've also got log. Now, obviously, I'm not really interested in those. You've got the clarifier down here, which is actually really nice and smooth, actually. It's a nice, smooth clarifier. It's not clicky or anything. If you press and hold in the channel change knob, you'll enter into settings. Let's quickly just go through them, starting at the most interesting one, and that's how to change the color of the screen. So you can choose between a variety of different colors, orange, blue, cyan, etc etc you can pretty much choose which one you like to see now i quite like the orange one or the green one let us know down in the comments which is your favorite color we then have a dimmer option to adjust the brightness of the lighting we then have tone which allows us to alter the receive tone and you could adjust this for your listening pleasure key beeps obviously well i personally turn them off and then number five roger beep yep i know it kind of that cb feature although I have heard Roger Beeps on 10 meters. We then have Indicator, where you can choose to show frequency, SWR, or a timeout timer when you're transmitting. You then got the option to choose between DC or temperature, which is shown on the screen, and then you've got Scan Mode, and then you've got Scan Type. Now, Scan Type and Scan Skip, they're a whole other section, which I probably won't cover in this video. PA setting allows you to make some changes with the public address. And then microphone type is where you can choose between an electret microphone and a dynamic microphone. That's quite handy knowing you can change the type of microphone connected. You then got SWR calibration. Now this is where it emits a tone from the radio and it allows you to manually adjust the aerial while it's actually transmitting. Kind of a strange one. You don't really want to be touching the element while it's transmitting, but it will show you the SWR on screen as it's doing this. NRC set is the noise reduction. This is where you can choose the amount of noise reduction applied when the NRC is enabled. Code set is where you can choose between a CTCSS or DCS code. Quite useful if you're using it for amateur radio 10 meter repeaters that require a CTCSS on the transmission to open it. Emergency channel allows you to set up an emergency channel that you want it to recall when you press the EMG button. You then have dual watch or DW. This allows you to choose between two frequencies that you can monitor at the same time, essentially just pulsating or flashing between the two channels. Split or repeater operation. Again, when you're using 10 meter repeaters, this is quite useful because 10 meter repeaters normally have 100 kilohertz offset. Now span setting, I have this turned on. Now I'll show you what that does specifically later, but it removes the need for using the band blocks and it now works as continuous VFO. You then get call set where you can change the frequency of a calling tone. And then you've got message where you can record an audio message up to 30 seconds, and then you can actually then play it back. I guess that's quite handy if you wanna record a CQ message and don't want to keep on saying it. You can literally just press the button and it will transmit your call message that you've pre-recorded. CQ, 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 Mike Zero, Delta, Corvette, Whiskey, CQ10, M0, DQW. CQ, 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 Mike Zero, Delta, Corvette, Whiskey, CQ10, M0, DQW. Now, automatic relay is quite interesting. When you've got it turned on, anything that it receives until the squelch is then reactivated, it will then retransmit it. You do have to use CTCSS or tone with this feature, but it will actually record a message up to five minutes and then play it back. Now that's pretty cool, I think. You've then got band name where you can reconfigure the two digits that show the band name. Volume accessory allows you to change the volume output from an accessory that's plugged into the DIN socket, the six pin DIN plug socket. 
SWR protection setting. Default, I think, is three, but you can change it here if you want it lower. Maximum voltage protection limit, again, similar to SWR protection setting, but you can set a maximum voltage so you don't get over voltage. Power limitation, you can actually alter the power that comes out of the radio. Well, kind of. You can actually set it to limit it to 10 watts, limit it to 4 watts, or have no power limitation, which obviously the radio is an 80 watt radio. Echo level, so echo level and echo delay. If you want to have echo on your audio, you can use those functions within the menu to change them to your liking. Temperature unit is where you can choose between Fahrenheit or Celsius. Temperature protection allows you to set a value. The default is 50 or 50 degrees where the fans would come on if you had them attached. You can obviously alter this if you want to, especially useful again if you're in hot countries. Mic up and down key lock, you can lock that feature so you don't accidentally change frequency. And reset, well, that's to reset the whole radio back to a factory default. Now I did test the power output into a dummy load and here are the results. It is stated to be 80 watts PEP and on average with a whistle on SSB, the meter reads around 70 watts. Maybe my meter isn't quick enough. Now here's a couple of clips making some contacts and the last one I'll show you will be a contact from the UK to Australia. Now I wasn't actually prepared to record this QSO it kind of took me by surprise, so I quickly recorded it from my phone. So the quality and audio might be a little hard to listen to, but take a listen to it anyway. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Yeah, Roger, Marco, yeah, you're five and nine here also. Lovely and strong into the UK this afternoon on 10 metres. I think this is the first time we may have worked. The name here is Matt, Mike, Alpha, Tango, Tango. And uh, yeah, you're lovely five and nine, QSL. QSL, Matt, same for you, same local, absolutely very, very good copy. Roll about 300 watt into the Akum amplifier. The transceiver is a Yaesu FT 2000 d Hello, CQ, CQ10, 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 Ocean Mike 8, Alpha Echo India, QRZ. Mike Zero, Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero, Delta Quebec uh, Whiskey, thanks for your call. Ocean Mike 8, Alpha Echo India, Operator Tom, Django, Oscar Mike, East Part of Slovak Republic, QSL. Yeah, QSL, QSL. Yeah, the name here is Matt Mike Alpha Tango. The name here is Matt Mike Alpha Tango. You're five and nine, fifty nine into the UK this afternoon, uh, this morning. QSL. Okay, one more time. Uh, ten to to BM. QRZ. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Things are coming back here. You five and seven with a very strong QS Baker. Copy, Matt. Go ahead. Yeah, 5 and 9 plus 10 over. 5 and 9 plus 10 dB here into the UK. Uh, name here is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango. Thanks very much for the contact. It's always a big pleasure, Matt. 73 is a good luck. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. One more time on 10. This is Charlie Uniform 2, but I have a November QRZ. Uh, Mike now one of the things that i always got told when i was using this president washington is that the modulation sounds really good on this radio so take a listen to this and let me know what you think about it down in the comments below this is uh, m0 dqw testing audio testing audio mike zero delta quebec whiskey testing audio on the president washington one two three four five over now earlier on we spoke about the span setting and when enabled the radio went into a kind of continuous vfo mode 
without the need to use the band button. If you tap the encoder, we can actually change the step size and that's seeing which digit position will change when it flashes. Now this is needed as the clarifier doesn't appear to have much of a swing to it, maybe one kilohertz, which is not enough to go between channels when the span feature is turned off. So I would definitely recommend to have that span feature turned on, always. Well, there we go, guys, the President Washington. Now, while some of you will look at this as just a CB radio, clearly it operates very well on the 10 meter band. Now, with the span feature turned on, allowing continuous VFO, I would have liked to see the channel numbers disappear and only the frequency in a larger font, maybe. It would also be nice to have a smooth VFO instead of a clicking one, but I guess President are trying to cater for all types of users. Now imagine if they did make a radio like this, no channel numbers, just a frequency with a smooth VFO. Now that would be a killer of a dedicated 10 meter radio. What do you think? Now while there is mic gain control, which comes set to maximum by default, it would be nice to see an adjustable voice compressor. I think that could really help with peak power on AM and SSB. Although I guess you could use a third party microphone with an inbuilt compressor. Now overall, I think it's easy to use. I think it sounds great on air. It has great power output and the receiver is okay. Maybe could do with being a little quieter on receive, but it is okay. Now I've not used it long enough in a warmer environment to see if it gets too hot and requires those optional heatsink fans. Maybe some of you users may live in a country where it's warm and need the fans. Let me know down in the comments if you live in a warm environment, use this radio and you actually need the fans. Anyway guys, that's the President Washington. I'm quite glad that I got this radio now as it's not exactly cheap, but it works really well. Until next video, take care of yourselves and we'll see you in the next one.